the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. So what is this faith that inspired the righteous of old to choose affliction over the passing pleasures of sin, or to endure bodily torments for the mere promise of a resurrection yet to come? In what was this faith grounded, such that it would have been easier, let's say, to bend a stone than to make the righteous of the Old Testament deny this faith? Well, the answer actually is hidden in our gospel this morning. The Lord says to Nathanael, You will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This phrase occurs in only one other place in Holy Scripture. Centuries earlier, Jesus' great, 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 great grandfather, Jacob, was sent by Jacob's father, Isaac, Jesus' many greats plus one grandfather, to the other side of the desert to find a wife, a wife from the house of Jacob's mother, Rebecca. Jesus, a many greats, plus one grandmother. Jacob obeyed, and on the way, it says, he came to a certain place when the sun had set. So the sun was dark. And dear brothers and sisters, I think we have good reason to see this as the bridal chamber. He came to the mystery of the bridal chamber. He took a stone, it says, and he placed it, not under his head, but curiously, beside his head. Following the ancient Syriac Christian tradition, we identify this stone because jo Joseph Jacob anointed it afterwards as the prefigurement of the Christ. He's in the bridal chamber. He's in the mystery of the Lord's tomb. While he slept, he had a dream. He saw a ladder, and it says that the ladder was standing on the earth. It's a, it's a powerful verb. It's hard to translate it with one English word. And so I, I, would, I would embellish it to bring out the full meaning of the verb. It was standing on the earth. It was fixed firmly in the earth. And it says he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on the ladder. It also says that the Lord was standing on the ladder. It's the same verb, only with a preposition in front of it. That is to say that Jacob saw his many great grandson, Jesus, the Lord, standing on the ladder. When Jacob awoke, he was afraid. And he said, this is a fearful place. This is the house of God, the gate of heaven. Jacob continued on his journey and came to his mother's house on the other side of the desert. There he saw a well for watering the sheep, but there was a great stone covering the well. Then a certain Rachel came to the well with her sheep, think Samaritan woman. She was the daughter of Laban, the brother of Jacob's mother, Jesus, many greats plus one, grandmother. Jacob saw her and he fell in love with her. He kissed her. Excuse me, he rolled the stone away from the well for her. Then he kissed her and embraced her and told her who he was. She brought him to her father. And Laban said to Jacob, Thou art bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Which is to say that Rachel was bone of Jacob's bones, flesh of Jacob's flesh, for she was Laban's daughter. Then began the fourteen years in which Jacob labored to win Rachel for his wife. Here we have a biblical story. It's an icon of the Christian faith. And it's a love story. This love story is historical. It's 
not mythological. That tells us that history is not an illusion. History is real and meaningful because it moves in the descending movement of God's erotic love for his bride, Israel, or the human soul. And in the ascending movement of the human soul's primordial love for the Lord, her heavenly bridegroom. Moreover, it reveals that our body is the sacred is sacred because our body is the chamber of this movement. Our body, you could say, is even the movement of this erotic love embodied. This erotic love of the soul for the Lord who first loved her, this is the biblical faith. And it is the very stuff, it's the very, it's the real fiber of human nature made in the image and likeness of God. It is the love that hides in the love of family, the love of the father and mother for their child, the child for his father and mother, the love of the child for his grandparents, the love of the grandparents for their grandchildren, the love of the husband for his wife and the wife for her husband. The righteous are they who walk in this faith, who live in the ascending and descending movement of this warm, familial love of God in the human soul that is the true fiber of human nature. This is the biblical faith that inspires the righteous to choose affliction over the passing pleasures of sin for the promise of a resurrection yet to come, because that resurrection is the promise of the consummation of this love. Jacob saw the angels, it says, ascending and descending on the ladder on which the Lord, his great, 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 great grandson, stood. They were ascending and descending then on the Lord, standing on the ladder. Jesus says to Nathanael that he will see the angels and ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Jacob's ladder then is the cross on which the Lord Jesus stood. On his cross, the Lord consummated his love for his bride in the flesh. The cross then is revealed as the marriage bed. And the Christian faith is thereby revealed to be the very fiber of human nature. In that sense, it's not a religion. It's what we are. It is the spiritual marriage of the heavenly bridegroom and his bride, the human soul, in the bridal chamber of the Lord's body, the church. And the Lord's Pascha, where the mystery of the spiritual marriage that was hidden from the ages is revealed, is the primordial mystery of creation. Because this spiritual marriage of Christ and his church his bride and the human soul, the mystery of the Lord's Pascha, it says several times, is from the foundation of the world. That is to say that the love story of Jacob and Rachel is not the template for the love story of Christ and his church. Rather, it is the story, the love story of Christ and his church that is the template for the love story of Jacob and Rachel. Jacob called the place of his dream the house of God. We were reading in Isaiah this last week, and we heard Isaiah several times calling to Israel as the house of Jacob. For example, O house of Jacob, come and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now Nathanael sees the Lord not in a dream, but in the flesh. That is to say, he sees the Lord in the house of Jacob. For in the flesh, through his mother, the Lord is the great, 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 great grandson of Jacob. If the fullness of God dwelt in Christ bodily, then it dwelt in the house of Jacob bodily. And the house of Jacob has become, in Christ, the house of God, in whose light we are called to walk. In the mystery of the Incarnation, 
the spiritual marriage of God and his bride, the human soul, is consummated. And human nature, as was Jacob's ladder, because in fact Jacob's ladder, as the cross, is also a symbol of human nature. Human nature is fixed firmly in the midst of the earth where the Lord has worked his salvation, as the psalmist says. Rachel saw Jacob when he had come to where she was on the other side of the desert. So if Nathanael sees Jesus in the flesh, it's because Jesus has already descended to come to the other side of the desert, onto this side of the grave where we are. He has come here to find his bride from among his mother's kinfolk, a bride who was bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh that he received from his mother that made him kin to us. Just as Jacob received from his mother, Rebekah, her flesh and her bones that made him kin to Rachel. This house of God where Jacob slept was a fearful place, and he was afraid. The Lord's tomb was a fearful place, and the myrrh-bearers were afraid. Clearly, Jacob's house of God is the Lord's tomb. But in Christ, the house of God has come into the house of Jacob, and the house of Jacob has become the house of God transfigured into a bridal chamber. For in it, the heavenly bridegroom came to us, his bride, and united himself to us in the bridal chamber of our heart, where we open, as the prophet says, unto God beyond all things. But the myrrh-bearers were not afraid at the Lord's tomb until they came upon the resurrection. Nor was Jacob afraid in the house of God until he rose from his sleep after seeing the ladder in his dream. The house of God, then, is the Lord's tomb, not as the fearsome place of the dead, but as the fearsome font of resurrection. The virginal womb that gives birth to children of God. In the church, we are in the other side, beyond the grave. Not because we're there yet, but because we are in the presence of the risen Christ in his Holy Spirit, just as Rachel was in Jacob's presence at the well. In the church, we are at the deep well of living water, which is the mystery of the Lord's tomb. And as did Jacob for his Rachel, so the Lord rolls the stone away from our heart for us, that we may drink him and thirst no more. Rachel became Jacob's bride and returned with him to his home. So we become the Lord's bride in the bridal chamber of the font. From the font we rise with him to ascend to his heavenly kingdom which is within us and to consummate the marriage that took place in the font in Holy Eucharist when we receive the bridegroom into our bodies as our life. We ascend with Christ on his cross, the ladder on which he descends to us. This ladder, says St. Isaac of Nineveh, is within you, hidden in your soul. Plunge deeply within yourself, away from sin, and there you will find steps by which you will be able to ascend. To ascend is to come out of ourselves, to give our souls erotic love to the heavenly bridegroom, who descends to us in his erotic love for us, to come out of himself in order to be received into the bosom of our soul's primordial love for him. So might the ascending and descending of the angels of God on Jacob's ladder be an icon of the erotic love that is the primordial movement of the cosmos. For the latter is the cross of the Lord of creation, and the Lord is standing on it. Christ on his cross, Christ on Jacob's ladder, 
is the supreme theophany. It is the supreme icon. For on the cross, Christ, the icon of the invisible God, reveals to his saints, to those who love him, the mystery hidden from the ages. God is love. And because God is love, Christ is in you. We have etched only the outline of this biblical icon of Jacob's ladder. Yet even in this, the fast, the ascetical disciplines of the church, the flowers that blossom from the wood of the cross, come into view as a concrete way by which we enter into the house of God that has come to dwell in the bridal chamber, the heart of the house of Jacob and to walk in the light. And now we understand that to walk in the light is to walk in the erotic love of the Lord and his bride, the soul, that ascends and descends on the ladder of the Savior's cross. So when I said earlier that we ascend with Christ on his cross, what I mean is we ascend in the erotic love of God that is the primordial principle of our soul the very fiber of our being. When then we take up the fast, we are waking us from sleep to the love of our soul for the heavenly bridegroom, to walk in the light of the Lord. Or rather we are coming out of ourselves to ascend to the bridegroom and our soul's primordial love for him who has come out of himself to descend in his love that abides forever to us at midnight. Another form, another image of the bridal chamber of our heart and to walk in the light of this love and in the spirit and this love of the spiritual marriage of the Christian faith so when we enter Great Lent we enter this love story of the Bible that is the foundation of the world we enter the bridal chamber now does the that, that we bend to the bridal chamber that is from the foundation of the world now does the Christian faith begin to become incarnate in us? That is to say, now does the spiritual marriage of Christ and his bride begin to become incarnate in us? Now are we drinking the living water flowing from the deep well of the Savior? It cleanses us deep within it. It restores us to our original beauty so that we are made worthy, not worthy as axios, but worthy as ikanos, that is to say, made worthy as in made strong enough to bear in the womb of our heart the seed of the love of God and so rise with him and to take up our cross which we now see to be the primordial erotic love of our soul and to ascend in that love of the cross to ascend with the bridegroom who comes to us at midnight in the bridal chamber of our heart, into his heavenly kingdom. Amen. Most holy Theopolos, save us. Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen.